scientists discovered how life recovered from the first mass extinction. Earth came into existence after undergoing several processes that resulted in its uniqueness and ability to support life. Life on Earth was smooth until a worldwide calamity hit in. This was a mass extinction that almost swept all life. Plants and animals' life were greatly affected. What exactly was this mass extinction all about? How did it affect life on Earth and how did life recover from the mass extinction? Join me today in this video as we discuss more on how life recovered from the first mass extinction. The first mass extinction Around 66 million years ago, Earth experienced its first collision with an asteroid. The asteroid had struck Earth leaving behind a huge crater. The diameter of the crater that formed was 150 kilometers. The energy accompanying the asteroid could set fire. The fire spread faster leading to the destruction of forests and vegetation. Since the fire could spread for more kilometers, it was hard for big or small animals to survive. The dust that resulted from the explosion covered the entire atmosphere. This became a barrier for sunlight to reach the Earth's surface. Even the big dinosaurs did not survive the mass extinction. However, some animals and plants managed to survive. Scavenging mammals survived. This may seem as a big loss, but to some animals, it was a benefit. Within a short period of time, predators were swept off. This means the rate of competition became low. The available resources were now meant for surviving animals. The deadly hunting animals were also gone. This made the sky a conducive environment for fluffy nut eaters to climb and move around in safety. They had a chance to learn how they can fly without any danger. Later, their fluff evolved to feathers and beaks became specialized to their source of food. This makes them wildly successful, which came in many species. They were flying and running all over the world. The mammals became dominant in the world. As forests and plants started growing again without competition, it was a great opportunity for them to eat and grow faster, and even change their lifestyle for the sake of nurturing the young ones instead of searching for food endlessly. Mammals now have energy to support the carnivores and even the apex predators. They expand into habitats and even oceans where they can find food. Years later, the mammals diversified more as compared to the preceding 160 million years ago. However, this was not the first time a catastrophe swept life on Earth. Two billion years earlier, the Great Oxidation event had also taken place, and without this first mass extinction, a life beyond simple bacteria could not be there. What else took life apart from mass extinction? Before the KT mass extinction, there was another extinction that almost swept all life. Even before the Permian extinction, a lot had happened. This catastrophe that happened before the two took all life on Earth. Some groups in the microbial communities had evolved to use photosynthesis instead of chemistry to acquire energy. They could take over everything the light touched. Photosynthesis gave out oxygen as a byproduct. The oxygen filled the oceans and the air. Since it was reactive, it poisoned whatever it came into contact with. This transformed the atmosphere as it was covered with a blanket layer of methane, which turned the Earth into an ice age for 300 million years. The ice spread from the pole to the equator and to the shorelines, making the photosynthesis-dependent plants to die. But this did not bring life on Earth to the end. Even our existence on Earth today depends on the ability of surviving life back in the catastrophic seasons. Unfortunately, the photosynthesis that brought great destruction is what our ecosystems rely on currently. Only 1% of the arcane life survived to the next age. From this 1%, the world was rebuilt again. The magma that was near the surface maintained a shallow water oasis in the midst of a desert. Some small communities of photosynthesizing bacteria have a survival chance here. Ancient bacteria also survived. The anaerobes that were feeding on hydrothermal minerals in oceans remained untouched by the darkness and oxygenated water. The bacteria survived and volcanic activity that was keeping them alive by maintaining tectonic forces brought the ice age to an end. Volcanoes continued to erupt, leading to carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere. An insulating layer of the greenhouse gas was formed. The atmosphere could now warm the surface by trapping heat. After winter, the ice was gone and the blue ocean emerged. They grew and spread. The warmth absorbed helped to chase the ice. The surviving lives that were evident as the world uncleared itself were from tiny oases into oceans of untapped riches. But the oceans were empty. 
Those animals that were lucky to survive were to enjoy the post-apocalyptic world. While for those that had survived the previous calamities, this came as an opportunity to them. Photosynthesis was still a major source of energy since it depended on sunlight. This led to the evolving of microbial predators. To take advantage of the energy produced by the photosynthesizing crops, this was a benefit to them as they could consume green produce to extract the energy in their organic structures. With all the resources available, the microbial predators had a chance to spread their wings and diversify in huge numbers. In the Proterozoic ocean life, for the photosynthesizing bacteria was smooth. All resources needed and the resistance power were available. However, the survivors of the Great Oxidation event were still struggling. The anaerobes were dying because of the reactive oxygen that was present. However, genetic transfer became a breakthrough as it became common in microbial communities, as it could help photosynthetic pathways to be shared. However, it was hard for genetic transfer to cover up the whole process since the anaerobes had been separated from their oxygen-loving sisters for many years. Even this was a scenario, the two communities still cooperated in many ways. Cooperation among living things on Earth Cooperation is a common thing in living things. Small dowdy birds that live in the plains of Africa. They spend most of their time moving around the game the savanna. These birds are called the ox pickers. They live among the zebras and other big mammals. They feed on the insects that are found on the mammal's back. This process helps them to find food in an easier way, and at the same time, they help in pest control. Since both animals are benefiting, this process is called symbiosis. This relationship does not only end here, but it extends to plants, where followers adapt to attract insect pollinators by producing sweat nectar to attract them in and help in spreading their sex cells to other flowers where the insect will move to. The symbiosis between the bacteria was a chance for surviving in the oxygenated world. Food chains of anaerobes shows that they acquire their energy from organic molecules of their oxygen-loving cousins. This symbiotic relationship helps to concern animals to embrace reproducing and growing together. Hence, the endosymbiotic relationship becomes permanent as the two fully depend on each other. This process still exists. It is evident in every cell of our bodies. Mitochondria is a result of the engulfed bacteria. This breaks down the sugars we eat and produce energy for our metabolism. Our mitochondria still retains the original DNA that is different of the cells. Endosymbiosis was a useful process as proterozoic cells found it being more useful. This made the newly paired endosymbiotes could break down organic matter in an oxygen-rich environment. This process gave rise to their dominance in the oceans. New dominant chimera and cyanobacteria also changed. Their ability to preserve and protect gave them the ability to capture sun energy to make their own organic matter. This ability helped the cell to survive anywhere. The photosynthesizing symbiotes became the chloroplast that is present in current plants and algae as revealed by Andreas Schimper. Scientists pursued this process and have come to a conclusion that endosymbiosis is the origin of life. Plants, animals, and fungi are all eukaryotes, which are made from a different cell to the bacteria that was dominant in the Archaean Ocean. They have chloroplasts and mitochondria of the original symbiosis and self-contained nuclei. This results in their complex existence. Thanks to the great oxidation event that resulted in this extreme transformation that created complex cells to support evolution on Earth. Escape from Oxygen Erasmus Darwin also tried to explain the purpose of sex in plants. He considered evolution and sex together for the first time. Oxygen inside the cell attacks chemical machinery leading to the breakdown of large and complex molecules like the DNA. This oxygen toxicity is the one that breaks down our bodies as we age. This makes the cells not too efficiently perform their functions. This led to the death of Dolly the sheep. The death was a result of old age associated diseases as it had inherited genetically old DNA of her mother. Mitochondria symbiotes need oxygen to release energy from food. The eukaryotes were not only surviving in water but also within the toxic oxygen. Those that had survived the oxidation event needed an extraordinary evolution innovation for their survival. And that innovation was sex which has become common in modern plant animals for species continuation. Eukaryotes copy half of the DNA and create smaller sex cells than themselves. But this does not mean that alone they can complete the process, they join with a cell from another individual to be complete. Thus, a daughter is a result of two individuals. 
Oxygen exposed eukaryotes to many risks and without innovation of sexual reproduction, they could have not survived. Through sexual reproduction, the eukaryotes gained themselves a protection chance against toxic oxygens. Since the process gives the daughter a chance of selecting what to inherit, it gives it more survival chances to survive even in the presence of toxic oxygen. Eukaryotes ranging from the sung cell to multicellular cells reproduce sexually. Thank you for watching this video. Please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss on any latest news about the same.